During the Vietnam War, the United States Army had to fight against an invisible enemy, as the Viet Cong guerrillas had the ability to attack by surprise and then disappear into the jungle. To solve this inconvenience, the government asserted its technical and military superiority, deploying all its resources and arming its men with state-of-the-art material. However, the U.S. High Command never suspected that, on occasions, their soldiers' own weapons would work against them. Many weapons first saw combat in Vietnam, so it was on the battlefield itself that their flaws became apparent. There was no more terrifying experience for a soldier than to see hundreds of Viet Cong guerrillas closing in on him, and just when he most needed to fire his rifle, it jammed, leaving him defenseless. This situation occurred with overwhelming frequency during the first years of the war, forcing Americans to make drastic decisions in order to survive. Today, in this new episode of Military History, we'll tell you everything about the weapons of the U.S. Army in the Vietnam War. Are you ready? Let's get started. In the Vietnam War, the United States deployed all its military might, since it was sure that its superiority in weapons would guarantee a quick victory. One of its deadliest weapons was the Bell UH-1 helicopter, popularly called the Huey, which was the first used by the U.S. armed forces to be powered by a turboshaft engine. For a Vietnamese farmer, it was terrifying to hear the sound of the Huey's propellers approaching his village in the distance. This helicopter was used in assault missions, but also in medical evacuation and rescue. It was equipped with four M60 machine guns, and had capacity for eight rockets. However, the deadliest air raids were those conducted by Lockheed AC-130 aircraft. This prototype was a heavy weapon aircraft powered by four turboprop engines. It was equipped with two 20mm Vulcan cannons, two 7.62mm minigun machine guns, and a 40mm Bofors cannon. The AC-130 was particularly effective in bombing and destroying supply routes used by the Viet Cong between 1969 and 1970. For their part, the ground troops used weapons as powerful as the M60, a general-purpose machine gun used as platoon support or as a medium infantry rifle. It weighed more than 10 kilos and its caliber was 7.62 millimeters. It could fire up to 650 shots per minute at a speed of 850 meters per second at a maximum range of more than 3,700 meters. While it had devastating firepower, its main drawback was the fact that the barrel would overheat when firing, and changing it was a cumbersome task. At the same time, its excessive weight made it difficult to manipulate. Another essential weapon for the U.S. infantry was the M18 Claymore, an anti-personnel mine that, unlike a traditional explosive, was directional and could be activated from afar via remote control. When it exploded, it released a flurry of metallic balls that maimed an enemy and could cause death. It was the size of a small brick and weighed less than 2 kilograms, although its C4 explosive was only 680 grams. When activated, the explosion threw shrapnel at 1,200 meters per second in a fan that reached 2 meters high and 50 meters wide. Just as the Americans had to watch out for clever Vietnamese traps, the Viet Cong guerrillas also had to be careful not to get blown up when they passed near a hidden claymore in the jungle. By 1966, the United States had already been fighting communist forces in Vietnam for several months. That year, the U.S. Army decided to replace the M14, the standard weapon used by infantry troops, with a new model, the M16. This was a semi-automatic rifle, whose advantages lay in its precision, its lightness, and its firepower. It weighed 4 kilos loaded, had a length of 1,000 millimeters, and its caliber was 5.56 millimeters. The projectiles had a maximum range of 3,600 meters away, at a speed of 950 meters per second. The deployment of the M16 was a response to the alarming number of casualties suffered at the hands of the Viet Cong and their AK-47S. However, soon after, controversies arose regarding the effectiveness of the new rifle. The first-generation M16 turned out to be incredibly problematic. The U.S. military complained about the flaws in the weapon, 
and in particular denounced the frequency with which it jammed in the middle of battle. When triggering, it often happened that a cartridge got stuck in the chamber, jamming the firing mechanism and preventing the weapon from firing repeatedly. In practice, the M16 functioned like an old single-shot musket, just like in 19th century warfare. The soldiers were forced to introduce a metal rod into the muzzle of the rifle to remove the jammed cartridge. Although it was a simple maneuver, it ended up delaying the advance of the troops, in addition to the consequent loss of effectiveness and coordination when acting. Despite its drawbacks, the US government defended the usefulness of the M16, and top army commanders made public statements claiming it was the best rifle to fight in Vietnam. At the same time, the United States implemented training routines in which infantry troops learned to deal with rifle imperfections. On the other hand, he distributed aid kits with materials to clean locked weapons. In 1967, the US Congress produced a devastating report, which collected evidence about the numerous problems with the M16 rifle. According to a survey of more than 1,500 infantrymen in Vietnam, 80% had suffered some type of misfire while in combat. Many wrote letters to their families, recounting the unsettling experience of having to trek through the Vietnamese jungle, with enemies on the lookout, not knowing if their rifle would respond adequately if needed. The relatives of the troops forwarded these letters to Congress, as a way to attract the attention of legislators and force them to open an investigation into the weapons. The result was the 1967 report, which, while acknowledging the Army's negligence in equipping its men and giving them adequate training, did nothing to change the state of affairs. Troops continued to receive the M16 throughout the war. While improvements were progressively made, the soldiers also sought to resolve the issue on their own. To do this, they began to take the weapons left by the enemy on the battlefield. The Viet Cong used the AK-47 rifle, which had everything the M16 lacked. It was a reliable and resistant weapon, which rarely failed. It was so easy to use that, with just a few hours of practice, a soldier was ready to fight. On the other hand, its magazine could hold 30 more rounds than the M16, and its ammunition was so light that one person could carry up to 350 rounds on it, giving it ample firepower. The AK-47 spread rapidly among Americans, and its effectiveness was so high that the US government itself developed its own secret supply chain for seized weapons, and its contractors began manufacturing ammunition for this rifle. In any case, as was made clear in the Vietnam War, technological superiority was not enough to obtain victory, since ingenuity was also a fundamental aspect of the fight. Ultimately, this was what decided the triumph of the communist forces. We reached the end of the video and we want to ask you, what do you think was the best weapon of the US Army? Leave your answer in the comment box below and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to learn about many more military events that left their mark on history.